So we're going to measure Planck's constant right now. Gorilla physics. Hopefully you've seen my video where I showed you gold leaf electroscope discharging only with certain frequencies of light. I've got a little bit of apparatus here which is going to allow us to measure the maximum kinetic energy of these photoelectrons. So this is our important uh, equation. This is Einstein's photoelectric equation and this is what we're going to use. We're going to come up with a way to measure the maximum kinetic energy of those photoelectrons. We're going to ignore this at the moment, okay, the work function. Don't actually need to work that out, but we will be able to infer it afterwards. And we're also going to measure, they're going to vary the frequency of the incident light. So this is my photo cell just here. This is the cathode and this is the anode. Now it's in a vacuum, so there's no other particles in there to get in our way. Light is going to shine onto this cathode here and if it's above the threshold frequency then we're going to release photoelectrons. These photoelectrons have a kinetic energy which is equivalent to EV where V is the stopping voltage that I need to apply to this side. You'll see this side is the negative side um, from this cell across here. This is essentially going to say no thanks to these electrons and repel them back. So the maximum kinetic energy of any of these electrons following through here will be equivalent to EV stop. So how I conduct this experiment is I'm going to plug a nanoammeter in here where it says I. Here's my ammeter over here. And then I'm going to use this potentiometer here and cell inside here to actually stop any of that current. So force these photoelectrons back the way they came. So I can put a voltmeter in just here and measure that stopping voltage. I don't so I start with the lowest frequency of light here. See my current is immediately reduced. Turn on here and dial up the stopping voltage until I get a reading of zero on my ammeter. So essentially until I've got a voltage such that all of the electrons are repelled sufficiently from the anode. Somewhere around there. It's certainly going to be okay to three sig figs stopping voltage there. Then I simply replace this for the different frequencies of light and I can change this again until I get a stopping voltage and go through all of the different colours of light. Well how is that useful? By stopping the particles with a voltage we'll have something related to this maximum kinetic energy that they have. Because we know that a voltage is the energy per unit charge and we know what our charge on our electrons is, we can say that the energy is equivalent to the charge on the electron times by the voltage. This is simply a rearranged form of this when we know that the charge on an electron is equivalent to E, the electronic charge, or 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. If that is the kinetic energy that they had, given that this voltage stopped them, then we could put this into our equation here where this is measured, this is known, this is not measured but doesn't really matter and I'll explain why that is in a second and this is varied. We want this to be our result. Now hopefully you're far enough along in your physics to understand that when we want to measure something as accurately as possible we try and design a graph to allow us to get our result as the gradient of that graph. To get a gradient, we need to rearrange this in the form y equals mx plus c. And then this is going to tell us what we're going to need to plot where on our graph. Because even from our GCC, we're familiar with graphs of y, uh, x, a gradient being m, and an intercept being c. 
So let's think, what can we vary? We can vary this and put that on our x-axis and we're measuring this so we can put that on our y-axis. So, so I can very quickly rearrange to this, simply moving across the phi. So I hope you can now see this has the same form as our equation for a straight line, y is mx plus c. So we're gonna put this on our x-axis, the frequency, this on our y-axis, and this work function will be the y-intercept. So I've got six different colors of light available and I've found the frequencies of those. I've only been able to find them to two significant figures, but um, that's not too bad for this. And I've, I'm basically gonna make those lights by using these cover slips. So if I cover it with the red, it's gonna filter out all but the red light. If I cover it with the yellow, it will filter out all but that frequency of yellow light. I'm going to use my phone light here and I've checked that. It's got a pretty continuous spectrum of light. Here are the results that I got for my five colors and my UV lamp. Why not have a go at plotting these? I'm sure you can hopefully see the pattern and get to the gradient yourself. So I asked Excel to plot me the graph and the graph looks something like this. The stopping voltage multiplied by the charge on an electron here on the Y axis, frequency on the X axis, the gradient is now Planck's constant and the last variable, the y-intercept, is the work function phi. Now that's negative because it's cutting the axis down here and if you remember our equation, we had minus phi. So we haven't done something strange with some minus energies there. We're just saying that phi is taken away from our result in our y equals mx plus c equation. So rather usefully for imagining what's happening here, we can just replace EV with EK, which is our maximum kinetic energy that those photoelectrons have. We've just measured them by stopping them with a opposing voltage. So Excel rather usefully gives us Y equals MX plus C without us having to actually do the analysis ourselves. Um, 7.3 times 10 to the minus 34 is our gradient M which is H, Planck's constant. Not bad since Planck's constant is 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34. So pretty reasonable order of magnitude result there. And the work function, 3.1 times 10 to the minus 19, that seems about right because we're talking about one um, photon moving one electron up to the highest energy level with this number here. So in the order of 10 to the minus 19 is, is what it's gonna be when we're talking about electrons having a charge of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 there. I can actually use that, and this wasn't really the aim of my experiment, but I can use that work function to try and figure out what is the threshold frequency for whatever metal that photocell is made out of. If this is the work function, and we know that that energy was given to those electrons by a photon, and this is our equation that tells us the energy of a photon, we can say, well, the work function is where the kinetic energy is zero, so in other words, a work function is equal to HF of the photon. So HF equals 3.1 times 10 to the minus 19, and this is now HF naught. In other words, Planck's constant times the threshold frequency. Simply sum that around by doing this number divided by Planck's constant. And just for fun, I'll use my measured Planck's constant from my experiment. 4.2 or 4. Point, yeah, 4.2 times 10 to the 14 hertz. So that's right at the red end of the visible spectrum. This is the minimum frequency a photon needs to liberate a electron. And that would make sense for something which they're designing so that we can do an experiment in a lab with a good range of frequencies um, to measure Planck's constant. So I hope that was useful and above all I hope that was interesting. 
This is one of those experiments that you're going to read about quite a lot and you're rarely going to get much of a go at. Um, so it's useful, I hope, just to see the thing in action and relate that diagram that's in your textbooks with the reality in the lab. So have a go at plotting that data and why not consider what about those anomalies, why might they have been caused and how could you improve that result? Why not consider if that was in the practical paper of your A-level, what would you write if you're asked to criticise the results or suggest an improvement to those results? The last thing I'd just like to say is that if you're still struggling with those ideas, one of the best things you can do is go to a simulation. Two types of simulations I'd recommend is the Virtual Physical Laboratory, which your teacher's probably got a copy of somewhere, which is a really good simulation, gives you instructions to work through. And the other is PHET FET, which is from Colorado University, and they have a wonderful simulation of the photoelectric effect. Go there, go to that website, because it's immediately available for free. You can download the little Java app and give it a go yourself. There are worksheets and things that go along with them, or you can just try and conduct a virtual experiment using the same method that I've just given you today. Thanks very much for watching. This is Gorilla Physics. I'm Kit Betts Masters. I hope that's helped you understand more, so you're gaining confidence, so you enjoy more, and so you do better in those exams.